And they're off and racing to a first timer. No full is one of the first to show. And also swift to stride is Chelsea Harbour. Cloudy Lane is front rank in the middle of the field without wider comply or die. Also racing front rank. He's towards the outside of the field as they make their way down towards the first. And uh, in the centre, we've got uh, Melanda Meal. Also handy is Chelsea Harbour. Filson run his front rank as well. No full still towards the inside as they now prepare to take the first off the fences in the 2008 National. Melanda Meal it is then who touched down together then with Bailey Breeze on the inside who's up in the firing line as well. Down the centre of the course and Snowy Morning is there. Mr. Pointman in a good position too. On the near side, Cloudy Lane, the favourite, takes it in about sixth or seventh place. And a faller on the inside there. It looked as though it was Black Appalachie that went there at the second. We also lost their backbeat as well. On towards the open ditch. Melanda Meal touched down in front and a mistake. Tumbling Dice has gone there as well at the third fence. And also towards the back, Iron Man has unseated Christian Williams too. We also lost, uh, I think Lamy might have gone as well. Racing on towards the next fence there. Comply or die. Fundamentalist has gone there at the next, at the fourth fence. Fundamentalist of Faller there. So too was Arda Hayes down. So as they go towards the one before Beecher's Brook, then Mr. Pointment will lead them over the next, then with Snowy Morning and uh, Melanda Meal also up with the pace to his Joachi. Back to Richard. All seem to get over the fifth OK. Mr. Pointman continuing to cut out the running in company as well with Melanda Meal. Snowy Morning is front rank. They're being tracked through as well in a handy position by Chelsea Harbour as they approach now Beecher's Brook for the first time. Mr. Pointman on the inside lands steeply. Uh, back in the field towards the uh, inside. We uh, lost no full. No full was the full at Beaches as they make their way now towards Foyne Avon. And it's Chelsea Harbour on the inside. Melanda Meal also racing prominently as they all take Foyne Avon. The back markers over it. Well, they included quite well back. Joe Acci also well back is Vodka Blur at this stage as they now approach the canal turn for the first time. This swinging left-hander. Cloudy Lanes racing in about 10th or 12th place at this stage as they now take the canal turn. Darjon's out wide. Madison Du Berle is the faller at the canal turn as they now straighten the towards Valley. Valentine's. There was also another faller well back in the field who was hampered well after the fence as they take Valentine's. Just trick picking out Hedge Hunter Richard, who's in about sixth or seventh place now, just tracking on the inside. It's uh, Melanda Meal, the leader from Mr. Pointman as they go to Valentine's. Leads by three lengths then. Comply or Die has got a good position in the race as well. So too is Snowy Morning. Joachi's right up there to Contraband. And then comes uh, Hedge Hunter right behind the leading six or seven as they go over the next fence. All seem to clear that. Okay, as a faller just behind them in the middle of the field there on the outside there. Could be that uh, might have been Bewley's Berry that may have gone. He has indeed gone. Bewley's Berry, a faller then as they go towards fence number, 20, number 11. And taking that is still the outsider, Melanda Meal, who's running a big race here in the early part of the National. Mr. Pointman and Simon is right up in the firing line as well. So too Darjons. All of a sudden, he's gone up into fourth place. Chelsea Harbour's not too far, far off the pace as well. So too is uh, Joe Acci. Missed appointment behind these leaders too. Wider comply or die. Just behind them then is Cloudy Lane with a good sit and Dundeera in amongst the leading pack as well. Butler's Cabin is just tracking Mr. Pointman too. So too up there is uh, Bewley's Berry. He's also survived the melee of the early part of the race. Turco's chasing them too. Um, High Cloy is up there as well. Dundeera, Cloudy Lane waited with. So too is nowhere. Norton Brook behind him. Back to Richard. Filson Run was the horse that was uh, badly hampered and unseated at Canal Turn. Keller Mee it was who fell down the side of the course as well. So Milanda Meal and uh, Chelsea Harbour continue towards the head of the fairs. Darge on the grey. Comply or die is racing prominently towards the back of the field. Norton Brook is struggling as the loose horses fortunately clear out of the way as they make their way on towards halfway. Darge on continuing. Mr. Pointman brushed the inside of the wings there. Cloudy Lane's just begun to drift back in the field slightly at uh, this stage. Butler's Cabin however is going quite strongly. Compl Fly or Die and Bewley's Berry are also up there. Simon is another one who's begun to work now into the race for the first time as the leaders now begin to approach the chair. Mr. Pointment is over. The whole field appear to have streamed over the chair virtually without mishap. So this is the roll call of the remaining runners in the National. Up front, Milan Demille, Simon the Grey, Darjon, Mr. Pointment, the inside. Then over in about fifth place, idle talk from Chelsea Harbour. Turco made a bad mistake at the water. Bewley's Berry in seventh with Comply or Die. Butler's 
Sabin and Snowy Morning next from Mon Mom who goes up the inside. Joachi comes next in about 15th place. Hedge Hunter is still going on the outside of High Cloy. Slim Pickings on the outside then of Cornish Set who is also still going. Arda Hay towards the outside. Dundira is racing in about 16th or 17th. They're really well grouped here for a national. King John's Castle still standing as well. Likewise, Nadover. There are an awful lot going out on the second circuit. Norton Brooks towards the tail. Bailey Breeze is still going. Cloudy Lane, I think, is still going, but he's quite well back as they head now down towards the first of the line towards Beecher's second time. And indeed, Cloudy Lane, Richard, is in about the rear quarter of the field. He's only about six or seven lengths off the pace, though. Daljon is probably just about the overall leader with Mr. Pointment. And on the near side, comply or die. Coming right there is a bad mistake, Daljon. Idle talk, the one in the red cap of Trevor Hemmings' third colours, has worked his way into a very good position on the inside. So too, Mon Moan, Butler's cabin, giving a great ride to Tony McCoy's terrific leap by him at that open ditch. Just tracking them, Bewley's Berry. Snowy morning is right up there in the firing line as well. Well, as they make their way, Bob Hall was being pulled up, and also another one that's gone is Point Barrow is also being pulled up as the runners take the next fence, number 20, and uh, comply or die. A big challenger now. Joachi went at that fence. Comply or die, possibly disputing the lead with Darjon and Butler's cabin and Mr. Pointman as they approach the one before Beaches. And on the inside, Mr. Pointman's given Sam Thomas a great ride. Gone the brave loop throughout. Butler's cabin, Tony McCoy looming to the front as they approach his nemesis. Beecher's Brook for the second time. Comply or Die is also right there. Snowy mornings out wide on the course with Darjon as they approach Beecher's. Mr. Pointman up on the inside of Melanda Mill. Butler's cabin's gone. Tony McCoy on the deck at Beecher's again. Second time round. No national for him. At the back of the field, beginning now to uh, struggle as well as uh, Chelsea Harbour as they now make the rest, or I should say Milan Meal. Chelsea Harbour still right up there with Mr. Pointment. A snowy morning is handy with Darjon out wide, comply or die. Bewley's Berry and Idle talk. Simon tracks them with nowhere. Green cap of Hedge Hunter in about ninth or tenth. Slim Pickings is making good ground as they now approach the canal turn. Bewley's Berry got in a bit close there. Turco makes a mistake on the outside. Bailey Breeze is continuing but a long way behind. Dundira is completely tailed off as they head towards Valentine's. Well, there's one or two of them trying to work their way into the picture, and Cloudy Lane is certainly one that's trying to make some ground. So too is uh, Hedge Hunter, but they're making their way. Turco is a faller at that particular fence. Coming up towards the next, Simon has uh, been pulled up as well. He's gone too. Bewley's Berry trying to work his way in. Snowy morning on the inside of the course. Mr. Pointman is there as well. Working further out, then comply or die. Just tracking uh, Darjon. And then on the inside of the course. Oh, bad mistake, Mr. Pointman there. Blundered his way over that one. And we also lost one at that particular fence. Looks as though King John's Castle has gone. And making their way then up towards the next. On the inside, it's Bewley's Berry from Snowy Morning. Comply or die has moved up into third place there. Slim Pickens is there too as well, also trying to make some progress on the inside. The hoop jacket of, Ch of hoop cap of Chelsea Harbour is in about fifth or sixth position. And Bewley's Berry, snowy morning from King John's Castle. And then on the inside comes Comply or Die, Slim Pickings and Chelsea Harbour, followed then by Cloudy Lane, who's trying to get into contention. Hedge Hunter feeling the pinch. They've got uh, two fences left to go, and Bewley's Berry leads the national field. Yeah, there's still plenty of chances here. Darjon was the greatest that went down the side of the course. Simon fell at Valentine's second time. It's Bewley's Berry, snowy morning, comply or die, who need the national field. Slim Pickings has picked his way through the field into contention with King John's Castle. Cloudy Lane staying on Dowley into sixth place as they take two from home. And there, snowy morning comes to head. Bewley's Berry, comply or die, travels strongly. Then Slim Pickings behind these, King John's Castle. The grey, a gap of four lengths to Cloudy Lane. The last in the national, comply or die, and snowy morning from from King John's Castle, Slim Pickings can't go on, neither can Bewley's Berry, they set off up the run-in. Comply or die for Timmy Murphy and David Pipe, the grey King John's Castle has the leader in his sights, however. Back in third place, Snowy Morning, as they race towards the elbow. Comply or die with Snowy Morning and King John's Castle pursuing him inside the final 200 yards. Comply or die is pulling out plenty on the run towards the line, and just like his father, David Pipe will train a national winner. Timmy Murphy and Comply or Die won the national. King John's Castle was second.